Hello and welcome to today's cryptocurrency technical analysis where I'm going to be covering the most important support and resistance level here on the Bitcoin chart that I will be trading from today. And then I want to be moving on to asking the question of has ADA Cardano entered a bear market? E.g. a bear market means that we'll be seeing much lower prices to come. That's the question and I'll be giving an answer towards the end of the video. I want to start here with Bitcoin and uh, yes, yeah, some important levels that I'm going to be looking at today. Um, so first of all, we can see that Bitcoin over the past, well, a few days really has been going more or less sideways. We are very much range bound. What does this mean? Well, it means generally speaking that when price heads down towards the lows of the range, you look for longs and when price heads up towards the high of the range, you look for shorts. OK, should we break the high of the range? Well, then naturally one would be expecting the next level of resistance. And should you break the bottom of your range low, then you look down towards your next level below the range of support. OK, so if that makes sense, if you have a sideways range, you break the higher range, you look towards your next level of resistance, you break the lower range, you look towards your next level of support. But until proven otherwise, we have an initial range here. So intraday, I mean, we can see where we bounced off of Quite clearly, when we bring out our CC fibs, we bring our fib from the low up to the high. We can see that we bounced off of our CC Fibonacci. And then we can actually see the exact opposite. When we bring our fib from the high of the move down to the low, we can see we rejected off our CC Fibonacci level. So surprise, surprise, the, the CC fibs doing their job once again in terms of support and in terms of resistance. That's the exact low thus far and the exact high thus far. Uh, obviously, this is going to have to break out at some point. It's going to have to break the higher of the CC, and then you look towards the higher range or the lower of the CC, you look towards the lower of the range. But quite, we can say, very influential on the market at the moment, those Fibonacci levels, as they always are, as they always are. Um, and so what we're looking at here is if we break toward, you know, if we break the higher of the CC, the, you know, I'm really looking at the next resistance level. Basically, you know, it's not that high, it's not that you know, much further above it, but you have $59,000. Okay, $59,000, you've seen you know, quite a lot of volume come in here. You know, seeing the point of control coming up in here. So you've got $59,000 intermediate level above you, then the high of the range is obviously coming in, you know, to that big, big level now of $60,500. Okay, if we break that high, then we, all, well, in my opinion, we all know what we're looking back up towards, up towards around 61K. So we we ha we can acknowledge, and I think this is the this is the most important thing, that when you're ready and when you, when you are aware of the levels, then you are ready to trade. And essentially, you know, as long as you're prepared, then then you can be trading and reacting off of those levels. And I think that we got a next level, intermediate level above us, or very short term around that fifty nine thousand dollars. And you got that sixty thousand five hundred bringing you up to the top of the range. Um, and that's if we obviously break our current CC Fibonacci level. OK, you can see how well respected that was. If you come down on a lower term time frame, literally straight up into it, you get the pullback instantaneously um and then in terms of support well in terms of support we could say our support's a little bit stronger okay our support's a little bit stronger why because we can see on the exact opposite we put our fibs we can see that we obviously bounced off of our cc of, of the lows we got quite a nice reaction off of it and we're coming up you know <laughs> we basically just come up to the opposite cc but this is obviously a pretty big big support as it stands um that's you know that's coming in at around fifty five thousand dollars uh, if we break if we break fifty five thousand dollars, we can see the low of our range is coming at around fifty three thousand dollars. So I think that, in my opinion, there's no need on Bitcoin to be like really really bullish. There's no need to be really really bearish. You can be very neutral on the charts, just essentially trading the range, and be accepting of you know the chart and just trust the technical analysis. Should we break the high of the range, look towards your next level of resistance. If we break the lower of the range, look towards your next you know the lower down support levels. But there's no need to be anticipating per se or a, you know, that, you know, there's no need to be thinking right now, oh, this is really, really bullish. We're going to break up or there's no need to be really bearish thinking, oh, my God, this is going to break down. We can literally just trade this range. You know, this is an absolute gift range at the moment. And, you know, it's kind of gives you a nice relaxing style of trading. You know, this is the most relaxing style of trading you can get. You know, you can be aware of your levels you know, and just trade the levels when they come. There's there's no, um, you know, it should be anyway. It should be a very emotionless, robotic style of trading when you're trading a range, okay? So, you know, that's that's helpful for a lot of people. I, I think then, you know, lots of people love to trade these ranges. Well, actually, I say that. A lot of, I think a lot of chart champions love to trade ranges. I guess a lot of normal people are very bored by the, these sort of things. You know, they find it very boring, but boring is good in trading. Boring is good in trading, <laughs> to be honest. You know, you get these, these sort of easy style of trades. Um, but one can say at the moment, obviously, it's held support really well. We're performing higher highs and higher lows. So we can be anticipating in terms of probabilities that we, we can get a push to the upside. 
Okay. Uh, and I've given you the levels should we break up. I've given you the levels if we fall down. Although one might say it's not as likely. But if we do fall down, then hey, we're aware of the levels to the downside as well. So it's just a case now of being patient for those levels to be hit. Based, your, based off your action and, and, and execute. Execute your trades. Okay. You can look at this to the long side, to the short side. You shouldn't have a bias of thinking, I only want a long. I only want a short. Just trade the charts. And I hope that that's helped you, giving you those key levels. In my opinion, honestly, very, very, very key um, here on the Bitcoin chart. So that's what I wanted to initially start off with there. So I hope that has been helpful for you. I'll just put up those one more time, those CC levels, because, you know, what can we say time and time and time again? They're just absolutely perfect. Um, obviously, you could look towards a harmonic here, <laughs> but um, that, that, that's um, that's Bitcoin. So I said I want to move. <laughs> I, I got to do this one. Got to do this one. I just remembered I wanted to I wanted to start off with this and I totally forgot. I uh, started off the video. Did I say it at the start of this video? We start my good day, everybody. I hope that you're doing very well and welcome to another Bitcoin technical analysis. And I should have started off this morning saying, Good day, mate. <laughs> good day, mate. Put another shrimp on the bar, me. <laughs> Shout out to my Australian brothers. I love you all. And sisters. We obviously haven't we have a we have a, we have Australian girls in our in our club as well. But shout out to the Australians. I'm joining you today. You, oh man, this is the thing. You could, can you tell I have like really rosy cheeks right now? I have really rosy cheeks because I I've been out this morning, and this is the thing. Like trading is all trading is is half about just your mentality. So you have to be in the right mindset. You have to be in the right state of mind. You have to have you know, if you want to be trading efficiently, if you want to be trading well, I think you have to be in a really good mental space. So I got I got up early today. Went for a run. It's brilliant sunshine. Come back now. And, uh, you know, I've already done my technical analysis myself this morning. For I'll come back, do a video for you all. And, uh, you know, just, you know, I'm doing a really positive, happy mindset right now. You know, everything's going well. <laughs> this was just brilliant because, good eye, mate. Put another shrimp on the bar. If you, if you don't get the reference, this is obviously from, uh, this is a dumb and dumber, dumber quote from, from the movie. It's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Go and watch that if you haven't already. But obviously... Buy bit, try and take us down in the UK. Hey, we're waking up suddenly in Australia today. <laughs> Obviously, pretty funny if you if you understand the joke. Um, if you don't understand the joke, then you might be thinking, "What is that you want about?" But anyway, what I'm going with this is get in a good state of mind. Go out for a run. You know, get your positive energy, and you you'll actually notice once you're feeling really positive, once you're feeling really confident, your actual trading will improve. I truly believe that if you are in a really good place mentally then your trading will subconsciously, you'll just find yourself taking better trades. You know, you'll be more confident holding your subs to target. You won't be feeling the fear. You won't be feeling this sort of doubt. Or, you know, if, if you're in a really bad mental place, then you, I do think you're naturally going to be taking bad trades. Or, or maybe not bad trades, but you won't be as confident in your subs. If that makes sense, I hope that kind of makes sense. Obviously, we're trading the charts, but psychology is a big part of trading. <laughs> and, I, and I said I, I said to you all, uh, I want to talk about Cardano. I've talked about Bitcoin here. I wanted to talk about Cardano and, and the question, the question is, uh, has Cardano entered a bear market? Is Cardano heading down right now? I want to remind you all of one thing. And this applies to me. This applies to everybody in the, in the world. OK, I'm just going to delete these off this off the chart for now. I want to say one, one thing to you. If you feel that you have a really, really, really good support level, or you have a really good resistance level, and you're like, I really want to short this level, I really want to long this level, the, the confluence is amazing, it's a really good trade. All you have to remember is it only takes one person, one person to think differently than you to change the flow of the market. E.g. if you're thinking right here, this is an amazing support level, but all it takes is one person to enter a big market short for that support to break. You're always aware all it takes is one person to think differently. E.g., for the example, to emphasize this, obviously I had that short from literally the all-time high on Bitcoin. <laughs> Beating this one while, while I got it. <laughs> I'm not going to let you forget this one. Uh, $62,000, I obviously have that short position on Bitcoin. The all-time high is $62,000, exactly. Obviously, we took that down for a 15% move to the downsides. Obviously, I've taken profit on it. But I just want to emphasize that this is a pretty good example. It took one person to think differently than all the rest of the world, and we're able to... I'm not saying it was myself alone, but a group of people are able to, you know, defend such levels of resistance. So with that in mind, remembering that Bitcoin is such a big market, we're able to time highs almost to the dollar. On Cardano, what happened on Cardano? What's been happening recently on Cardano? 
and I want to just, you know, take this lightheartedly. If you're a, if you're a fan of Cardano, you absolutely love Cardano. I mean no harm. Or I didn't mean no hate on Cardano. Like I don't really, you know, at the end of the day, it's a coin. I have no bias. I don't hate it. I don't love it. It's just a coin to trade. I have no personal preferences against this at all. I just view it as an asset to trade, period. I don't care what its fundamentals are, anything about it. But Cardano, and we were looking at Cardano here, and you might be thinking to yourself, well, Cardano recently fell 20% to the downside. Okay, 20% to the downside. And I want to just ask the question of, do you think Cardano is in a bear market right now? Or has Cardano potentially entered a bear market? Um, obviously, this is a bit of a uh, a question. It's meant to just get you thinking. I'm not necessarily saying, I'm not saying, I'll just say this. I'm not saying we've entered a bear market on Cardano. But it was just the one to think, get you thinking, what, what does it take to start a bear market? All it takes to start a bear market is for one person to think differently than you and to think this is an overvalued asset. Once they believe the value is overvalued, they're going to be looking to sell because they think they're selling at a really good overvalued price. And anybody buying up at this overvalued price is pretty crazy because they believe they're going to be able to buy it back lower. So if one person believes to think it's overvalued, you can start to see how this can cause a chain reaction of lots of people suddenly starting to sell and suddenly you're at an overvalued price and price is going to come down to, to find a fair value where the sellers are no longer thinking that this is overvalued and it's now come back to a fair price where there is going to be a change in, you know, thoughts. Maybe we've come back to support and suddenly less people are interested in selling these prices and you have a bit, a bit more of demand, so to speak. So we could we could bring it back to a kind of a way of thinking of supply versus demand at really high prices. We might be thinking, you know, there's not much demand up here. Price comes back down to fair value, which we've obviously started to find potentially a fair value. And so is Cardano in a bear market? Well, the answer is no. I don't really think Cardano is in a bear market, to be honest with you. If anything, it's in a massive bull market. But there's one thing that I wanted to bring to your attention and why I'm talking about this. And this is basically what happened to Cardano. So you can see here. I took a short on Cardano and this is just one, this is just one to get you thinking. It's not, I'm not going to be talking about the technical analysis. So if you're here for the technical analysis, that's done and you may, you know, click off the video. I'm just here to talk now a little bit about game theory when it comes to coins and how you look to trade them. Uh, but you can see here, I've uh, done a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of a trolling post, I suppose. But uh, you can see here, take this lightheartedly, take it as a joke, you know. Uh, I, I put this post on the, on the 18th. And I'll show you, by the way, this this was my first ever cut short on Cardano. First ever short I took on Cardano, uh, which was uh, obviously, well, we can say a pretty nice short. Why why was this my first ever short on Cardano? Well, because it actually got listed on Bybit on the on the 18th. So this was the first time I've ever been able to trade it. I, I do not trade on, you know, Binance. I don't trade on FTX. I don't trade on, uh, you know, all these Coinbase, Kraken, all these other exchanges. Why? Because I, I truly honestly believe that, it went like this inside a cryptocurrency. BitMEX was the king. Bitcoin was like the best exchange to trade on. And then BitMEX died. You know, BitMEX died when they introduced KYC. And then all the good traders, they left BitMEX and they've, they've gone to Bybit. Basically, they everyone migrated to Bybit. You know, you can look at the volume. The volume picked up massively on Bybit. It just became the, the, the exchange to trade Bitcoin. And I, and I stick by my opinion that if you are a serious trader, you are trading on Bybit. And these other exchanges are kind of just like, I think they're a little bit joke exchanges. Uh, but, you know, this was basically the first opportunity I've ever had to short Bybit because, uh, sorry, short AD, Cardano ADA because it literally got listed on Bybit on the 18th. And I put on a bit of a joke on the time saying, <laughs> you know, ADA got listed on Coinbase. And obviously this is where it got listed on Coinbase. And it, and it got, or the, the news that it was getting listed on Coinbase pumped Cardano. And then as soon as it got listed on Cardano, Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> you see this? Look at the time that I entered this Cardano short. Literally 15, 59, 20. So we're going to say four o'clock here. And you see the, the, the downwards candle where we started the drop on Cardano was literally on 16.00. So funnily enough, <laughs> funnily enough, we actually managed to short the exact high on Cardano. Time to have some fun on Cardano. Managed to get that entry literally at the highs. And... Uh, Again, I'm not, not saying this to be uh, hateful on Cardano or anything, but all, all I'm saying is what you have to remember here is all it takes is for one person to think differently than you. And that's all it takes to start a bear market.
So I, I, again, I'm asking the question. I don't, I don't really think it has started a bear market on Cardano. But all I'm just emphasizing here is, isn't it quite funny that Bybit listed Cardano and instantly it falls 20%. Every other exchange, it starts to pump. You enter the real exchange where I'm telling you the real traders are trading on this exchange. Um, look, like, like, like this guy says, the masses want to long. So the wells will short basically. And essentially this kind of, we can agree, you know, the Bybit is the real exchange. It gets listed on the first ever real exchange and hey, you actually get a decrease in price because this is, this is where people know what they're doing. But, you know, I'm just talking about this to bring really emphasize the point. The point that I'm trying to make is it takes one person to think differently than everybody else. And that's all it takes. That is literally all it takes to totally change the flow of the market. You know, for ages, Cardano was just going up and 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 up. Got listed on Bybit. 20% to the downside. Obviously, this has taken, um, you know, that's taken three days to come down 20%. But all it took is initially <laughs> a short position from literally the absolute high. And, um, you know, just check, check the timestamps, you know, check the timestamps. And that's all it took. And then suddenly we're seeing 400, nearly 500% profit. And, um, you know, you, you head down. But, um, you know, it's about 20% to the downside. So I said I'd start off with asking the question of, is Cardano in a bear market? I do not think so. You know, my answer is no, I don't think this is in a, in a bear market. I do think that we had a nice opportunity for a retrace, very overvalued. We've had a retrace, hey, um, you know, if it pumps up from here, it pumps up from here. But um, I think you just got to remember the absolute point that I'm trying to emphasize, and that's trade the charts. Don't trade what you want. Don't trade what you like. And just, you know, always use risk management. This is why risk management is totally important in trading because you're never going to have a 100% win rate. You are always going to take losses. You know, it's inevitable that you will take a loss. Uh, and if you are prepared for that, if you're ready for, for to, to be wrong in the market, then you'll know where you're going to place your stop losses, where you want to get out. You know where you're right, you know where you're wrong. And that's all you need. That's all you need. And hopefully you're going to have a pretty nice win rate. <laughs> but um, at the end of the day, we're trading the charts, just like when we come flip back over to Bitcoin. Um, you know, could have we shot straight through when we take our fib from the high to low? Could have we shot straight through to CC here? Uh, the answer is obviously yes. Is it likely that we just went straight through it? One could say arguably no. And we've got a pullback now. Arguably, this, you know, this is a nice trade. And if we go up from here, well, you go up from here. But when you reach levels of resistance, you look for shorts. When you reach levels of support, you look for longs. And the same on Cardano at the end of the day. Do, do you think Cardano here... If we just remove and forget that I shorted it, if you just answer the simple question of this thing had pumps 50% um, in two days off of a Coinbase listing news, do you think that this is a good time to buy or do you think that's a good time to sell? Like, ask yourself that question. Do you think this is a good time to buy when it's pumped 50% in two days or do you think that is a good time to sell? And I think if you understand technical analysis... <laughs> If you understand how, how the markets move, I don't think you're going to be saying this is a good time to buy. Arguably, maybe not the best time to sell. You've got to have some pretty big, uh, um, let's just say you've got to have uh, an appetite for risk, I suppose, at this moment in time if you want to sell. That's definitely not for everybody. But I think we can safely say it's not the time to buy. If it's up 50% in two days and you're buying up here, uh, chartchampions.com, you can learn about trading. Let's just let's just say that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, good day, everybody from Australia. <laughs> Put a shrimp on the barbie. I uh, hope that you've enjoyed today's video. A bit different than normal, not really so focused on the technical analysis. I've taught you through my levels over here on the Bitcoin chart, which I really do feel are, are pretty pivotal. I personally feel that we can push up a bit higher here. Naturally, as if we're trading, you know, I'm looking at, I'm trading Cardano over on Bybit, which is obviously the tether pair. So if if Bitcoin pushes up, obviously that's going to bring Cardano up as well on the, on the tether pair likely. So I just think things to bear in mind, I suppose. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think we have a nice range here on the Bitcoin chart, very easily defined levels of resistance and support. And um, yeah, I think we have a really nice trading environment. I think you can approach it very neutrally, uh, as you should kind of all the time. You should really approach it neutrally. You don't want to be a perma bull. You don't want to be a perma bear. Just trade the charts. And even if you, you know, you're walking away with a, 60 70 percent win rate you should be very happy at the end of the week uh, that really should be bringing you profitable results and um, that's what you want to be profitable so i hope that you've enjoyed today's video we'll end obviously by the disclaimer the legal disclaimer that no financial advice in this video make sure you pause and understand that fully and uh that's me signing off, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you have really enjoyed the video. If you have, you can smash up the likes because uh, undoubtedly 
<laughs> we'll have I, I predict about 50 dislikes maybe on this video uh maybe more uh but if you've enjoyed it i'd, I'd appreciate a like and um yeah i hope you have a brilliant week ahead lots of opportunities this week and uh yeah it should be a really really fun week of trading uh so yeah that's me signing off thank you everybody and have a brilliant day cheers